So the Houston Rockets injury problems have only gotten bigger as Clint Capella is now going to be out for four to six weeks because he has a broken thumb or something like that. And now James Harden's degree of difficulty rises to another level as the way he has gone nuclear lately has allowed this team to still win games and win them, uh, well, win a lot of them, I should say. Can the Rockets still win without Clint Capella? Well, we have to talk about how good Capella was this season first, so defensively, I think he was a little worse. Not to say that he still wasn't one of the most versatile defensive fives in the league, because he is. I mean, he can switch on to guards. Not all the time, I mean, he's still going to get beat, but he can definitely do it a lot more than a decent amount of fives. Stepping up in the pick and roll, um, doing just general help defense things, I think Capella was pretty alright at. And of course, he was more athletic, and he's going to play harder than a lot of NBA fives as well. And he was able to get up to 34 minutes a game, because it seems that his stamina issues every single season have just been a little smaller of an issue. And give him credit, because he's no longer a horrible free throw shooter, as he is at a now slightly underwhelming 63% from there. And now the Rockets are going to be without him for quite a while. That is going to be tough. I mean... The one thing we can say is at least the Rockets are not as reliant on their pick and rolls as they were a few years ago, where I think losing Capella would have been devastating, whereas now, because Harden is just so good at beating guys in isolations, whether it's getting past them on the dribble, finishing at the rim, getting fouled, or hitting step backs, or just getting fouled on step backs, the offense may still be able to be a thing. Not to say that they never run pick and roll, and not to say that they still don't love having Capella there. I mean, the guy grabs five offensive rebounds a game. He's always an alley-oop target for James Harden. And if we look at Capella's numbers over the last... Well, if we just look at December, where the Rockets really took off, I mean, the guy was putting up 16 points, 14 rebounds. uh, Yeah, that's just the box score stuff. Um, And then you take into account all the other things he does well, and... It seems that Nene is going to be starting in place of Capella. We assume he's not going to play 40, or not 40, uh, like the mid-30s that Capella would typically play. But we do assume he's at least going to give them, I don't know, 20, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on the night. And then from there, I mean, where do they go at center? I think it's between P.J. Tucker with some small lineups. Probably some Isaiah Hartenstein. I don't know much about him. To my defense, he only played about 10 minutes a game to open up this season, and he hasn't played since the beginning of December. Even so, I should probably do a little bit of research about the guy. He is 7 feet tall, and I know that much. And I don't think we're going to see a lot of Marquise Chris. So, I'm mainly going to focus on Nene, because I think he's going to play the most. Um, You know, Nene, at least last season, or maybe it was the year before, put in some respectable minutes just as a big body who, sure, cannot do the things that Capella can do, but he can still play NBA basketball, right? And in fact, you could argue that um, he's a better screen setter than Capella because he's just a bigger guy. Now, Capella is certainly a better roller and a better finisher, but Nene is fundamentally sound enough to understand when to cut, where the spacing is, and he knows how to attack a mismatch, and he probably has some more post skills than Capella does as well. Not that I think the Rockets are going to throw it to Nene in the post pretty much ever, but maybe one or two possessions every now and then it could happen. So I do think Nene can maybe still give them some basketball, but at the same time, the guy hasn't played 20 minutes a game since 2016 when he was at the age of 33 years old. So teams are going to attack him, and that's going to be a fear for Houston is if they can uh, not even prosper in the minutes with Nene, but just don't suck, pretty much. I think that's got to be the mentality now. You know, Gordon has missed a little bit of time here. Chris Paul is still out. Capella's gone. They're hanging on by a thread with these wings. I mean, Austin Rivers has been a revelation for them. We'll see if he falls back down or if he can keep on keeping on. But it's pretty much don't suck and hope that Harden can just bring it home for you. And yeah, they're asking him to do an insane amount of things right now. And Another conversation can then come up about whether Harden cares too much about the MVP, if he expels too much of his energy in the regular season, and that's why he gets tired in the playoffs, so on and so forth. They need him right now is the point. I mean, they need him to put up his 34, 35 points a game and six to eight assists and 
shooting an ungodly number of three-pointers a game. Because if he doesn't do that, they're not going to win. So Nene can hopefully just facilitate all that a little bit. When you go to P.J. Tucker at small ball five, which I think they're going to at least attempt, the question is, do they have enough wings to do that? I mean, Daniel House has been pretty damn okay for them as a 3 and D guy. James Ennis, I think, has been a little worse, but not horrible. Uh, it would really be nice to have Eric Gordon right now. They don't. I mean, you can put a lineup out there of James Harden, Austin Rivers, Daniel House, James Ennis, P.J. Tucker, if you want to go small. It's not amazing, but perhaps it's respectable enough with how good Harden is playing right now for this team to still be all right. What will be interesting to see is the defensive schemes because Capella would switch onto guards a decent amount of the time. And now, of course, with Nene, I don't think you're really going to want him to do that. So are you going to drop him on the pick and roll? That's probably what I would do because if you have Nene step up, then he's going to get killed all day. But if you have him back up and if you have the guards just kind of try to contain the uh, the ball handler enough to where the, uh, the, the dropping big can then get back to his guy. I mean, it is like, well, it can be a successful um, way to defend screens. It's just, it's definitely not as aggressive. And I think the ceiling of that kind of thing may not be as high for this Houston team. I mean, for a team like San Antonio or Portland, that works great because those teams have that down. Whereas for this Houston team, I don't know if they're going to be super all in on doing that all the time, but... I don't know. You have to play to your personnel, and I, do, I just don't trust Nene to switch on to perimeter players like that. Now, I guess you could be a little bit more aggressive when Nene is not in there, depending on how Hartenstein holds up, and you know, PJ Tucker, of course, can defend a lot of positions, so it is still uh, some things they could do. Could they make a move to get some center for this next month? I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't be against that depending on what you were actually giving up I do think they still want to make a move of some kind I don't think they wanted to trade for another center but depending on how the next couple games for them go maybe they're forced to maybe they're not I don't know the other thing we can do is if we can get back to Capella is while his stamina has been very good this season he has clearly improved there is there a chance that this is going to set him back and he could be closer to last year's Capella where just because he misses so much time, it's tough for him to really get back into the flow of the game, and he's perhaps not able to recover to where he can play mid-30s again. I think that is a fear that we should at least hold on to a little bit, because that was a problem with Capella, right? As he would get tired, and then he would be basically played off the floor against really good teams because he just couldn't hold up, and that has not been the case this season, but I don't know. It's been half a year. And now he's not going to play for at least a month. Just saying. Other things to care about. Um, is there a chance James Harden just falls a little bit back down to earth? I don't know. I mean, I do think if there's anybody who can hold this up, I do think it's him. But if he is even 5% worse with Capella now being gone, this team could end up nosediving here. Now, if we look at their upcoming games, uh, they're playing the Grizzlies tonight. Marcus Gasol versus Nene. There's definitely an advantage for the Grizzlies. Of course, Gasol's shooting has been pretty rough lately, so who knows. The Nets against the Rockets, I think that's winnable. Lakers, definitely winnable if LeBron's not going to play. Uh, Joel Embiid against these guys, that could be a tough one, but then they got the Knicks. You know, there's a Magic game in there. There's a Suns game in there. To be fair, DeAndre Ayton's really good. I don't know. Um, my prediction is they'll end up being a little worse because of this. That's my take. And given the injury problems they've had and given where they currently sit in the Western Conference, which is, give me a second, I'm going to guess it's like around number five. Number six. Uh, perhaps being a little worse is all you need to fall out of it. I mean, the eighth-seeded Lakers are only two games back of the Rockets, so... We'll see what happens. I guess I end up being a little bit more on the negative side. But James Harden just may keep on being Superman, and perhaps that's enough for them to maintain this. 